Okay, picking up right where we left off last time, we have our ESP uh, A266 Wemos module with the Relay Shield here. And we're going to quickly look at this code. Again, there's a link in the description to my GitHub page where you can download this. Uh, if you go to the GitHub page, it is under the uh, hardware project, ESP8266 folder, Wemos folder, and then there's a Relay web server with the Arduino code in there for this project. Uh, quickly at the top here, we're importing some libraries that help us set this all up, doing a lot of stuff in the background there. And here we're going to set up some uh, variables. Again, we're going to set relay to GPIO pin 5. And then these, to get this working, this code, this basic example, all you're going to have to do is in between these quotation marks and these quotation marks, set the um, name of your access point, your router that you're going to be connecting to, and the password for it. So now, we can go ahead and go straight to our setup function down here. We'll go through the other stuff when we get to it, but we're going to start in the setup. Here we're going to set our our uh, built-in LED as an output and our relay as an output, just as we did in the basic example. And then we're going to turn uh, the LED off. Next, we're going to set up some serial communications. This allows us to troubleshoot stuff through the USB port using serial communications. Once that's enabled, then we're going to begin Wi-Fi and connect to our router using the router name and password that we set up top. Then we're going to print a blank line to the serial terminal. And then we're going to wait while it's trying to connect and it's not connected. Every half a second it's going to print out a dot to the serial port so we know that it's trying to connect. Once it does that, it does a blank line just for formatting. And then it says, it will tell you who you're connected to. It says connected to and then the router you're connected to and what IP address it was uh, sent. So it's going to say your IP address is in this command here, outputs your IP address. If for some reason you missed that on the serial output, you can just search your network for new devices. Okay, here we're going to uh, begin some ESP stuff. We're going to print some more information to the, um, the serial port. And then we're going to set the server on. And here we can set different basically web pages. Here is root. So if you type in the IP address into your web browser, it's going to run this function. Uh, and then I left some code in here from the basic example, which isn't really part of this. But as you want, if you wanted to add more functionality to it, you would use these commands. Uh, so look into this, but we're not going to really go over that this time. And then here, you know, if it's looking for a file that's not found, if you give it a, a URL that's not found, it's going to run the, URL, uh, the handle not found function. And we'll look at both of those. And then it's going to start the server up and print to the serial port uh, that the HTTP server has started. Then we're going to start our loop here, which is just going to handle any client input. Okay, so it's waiting for a web browser or some sort of web application to connect to it. And basically we have it set up that if you just go to the IP address, the root folder here, the forward slash here, it's going to run this handle root function. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. Up here you can see that we have that function. Soon as a, someone tries to connect to the default folder of our web server here, we're going to print to the serial. So we're going to be still be sending stuff to the serial port through USB here for troubleshooting uh, that a client is connecting. The backslash n backslash n just adds two new lines just for formatting. Uh, and then the server send is actually what it's sending back to the client. It's sending information. It's going to give us a signal of 200, which uh, in error codes for uh, web servers, 200 means everything's good, meaning that you have connected. Then we're going to say what we're sending is plain text. And then we're going to send some plain text. You can also change this text to eight slash HTML if you want to send HTML code. But we're just going to send some pl same plain text saying activated relay. Uh, then again, we're going to send some information to the serial port saying that the message was sent. We're going to turn uh, both the LED, the built-in LED, and the relay to high. Then we're going to print to the serial port, relay on. Wait two seconds, turn the relay off, say the relay is off, turn the LED off, uh, or actually low, which in this case we'll turn it back on. And then the serial port, uh, serial client, a serial communication saying that the client has disconnected. So that's after everything's done, uh, the web server has passed to the web browser everything it needs and then it disconnects. So here, this is handles if it's not found. So if you give it an address that this not, that's not in this program, 
uh, it's going to do this. It's going to flip that LED high, send a message saying file not found. It's going to give you the, um, well, here we're creating a variable called message. We're saying the file's not found. Uh, say what was requested, what method, uh, any arguments that were passed. And then we're going to put all that together and we're going to send that as plain text to the web browser. Uh, we could put some serial port information in there if that happens, but I didn't. Uh, and then we can set the built-in LED low. So I've already uploaded this. Uh, I'm going to connect up to it. And then in the Arduino uh, interface here, I can hit Control Shift M, Control Shift M, or just sh what? What am I doing? Oh, I gotta check the correct port first, and then I can hit Control Shift M, and it opens up our serial interface here. Uh, let me go ahead and just reset my board here so we can see the messages coming through. You can see dot dot dot. It was trying to connect, it's saying that it has connected to my server, my uh, router which is Castle, and it's giving it this IP address, and that it started the HTTP server. So now I can go to my web browser, put in that IP address, and when I do, we should see this relay turn on for two seconds, then off. There we go. If I refresh the page, it does the same thing. And again, you can do this with any web browser, or anything that talks to web pages. So here, I am going to uh, launch a new shell, and I can say, I can use wget or curl or whatever I want. I can say that I want to HTTP that, and then I'm just going to output the, the information to the screen. So I ran that. You can see it flips on the relay. Now, if I run it twice in a row, you notice it hangs for a second here in the in the terminal. And the reason is the ESP8266 chip can only handle one client at a time. And we're still in that delay, so we're turning on the relay and waiting two seconds. So basically, if I try to connect again while the client's already connected, it's going to keep trying to connect until it's available or times out. So that's why if I run it twice in a row, the second time it's going to hang a little bit, and then you'll notice that it very briefly turns the relay off and on again. Let me do it again. So you'll see this little red light. Well, you didn't really see it in the camera, but it flashes for a second and you can hear it click on and off. So keep that in mind, but really uh, with a relay that's irrelevant because you're not gonna be uh, flicking things on and off multiple times. Um, so again, we did one command that turns it on for two seconds and off, but you can have two different URLs that turns it on and then another URL for it to be off, or you can have it check its value and have one URL that toggles it on and off. But again, the relay will allow you to control higher voltage things. So if you want to turn on a light bulb is a regular example, but anything that takes a higher voltage, again, this relay here, you can read on top what it, uh, what it handles. And it takes in, it can handle uh, 10 volts, or sorry, 10 amps, or and 250 volts AC. Uh, so that is how you can control things wirelessly uh, through Wi-Fi using the ESP8266 Wemos board, or really any ESP8266 chip and a relay. Uh, so that's a basic example there again, and then you can modify that code to, um, oh, and then I, again, I have my serial output here, right there. So as we're doing that, we're also setting up information. But again, I'm hooked to USB here, but that USB cable is right now just being used for power and serial communications. Everything else is done being done through Wi-Fi. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's fairly simple, a little more complex than the last video. But uh, if you look at the code, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you can create multiple functions if you want, but right now we just have the one function for handling if you go to the root directory and one if you have um, the file not found. And then again, I, I left in here, there's a, you can do inline. And then here, this is an example of uh, the, um, instead of calling a separate function, it's just doing something. So if I was to take that and go back to my web browser, and put that in there, you can see this works well, but it didn't turn my relay on and off. You can see right here 
that function. So this is just an example of instead of calling a separate function, if you're just going to do one small thing, you can feed it in here, or you can put multiple things in here. But really, if it gets more than a couple of lines, you're going to want to put it in its own function. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you continue watching this series as we get into things like uh, LED screens and uh, dot matrix screens. And what else did I get? Uh, oh, and then I have an SD card so we can actually turn this thing into a file server. Rather slow, but file server. Um, again, thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description of this video, as well as uh, a link to my Patreon page if you want to support me over there, and a link to the code showed in this video. Uh, shown in this video. I thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.